Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. Uh, today I have two guests, two guests who I would say have got me through winters and now summers as well uh, with their wines, their QV wines, uh, which are possibly uh, the best thing that's happened to me from them ever. Um, they're also two lovely, gorgeous, funny humans um, and they've just started their own podcast called Help, I'm a Parent. It's Ollie and Emma Lou Proudla. Oh, hello. Thank you, G. Is Hi. it too early to have QV right now? Probably. Never. I don't I think do. it is. You know what? It is 12 o'clock somewhere. Yeah. Does it have to be 12 o'clock or 5 o'clock? What is the rule? I think it's 11 o'clock. No, no. Right. We, say, we like to say 11. As long as it's 11 a.m. somewhere, we're good. I do love it. I love it, Emma. How much, uh, if not, if you're scrolling through your Instagram, how many pictures of you have oh, wine, wine in your hand? I know, I know. It's quite a lot. But do you know what? It's my hobby. <laughs> I mean, what a great hobby to have. It's fine. No, I love it. It's um, Yeah, I was actually looking on my Instagram the other day thinking, on here with, uh, with a glass of wine, but listen, I love it. It's a passion yeah. of yours, Bob. You've got to do it. You've got to follow yeah. your passions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now you've turned it into a business. So, you know, if Amen. anything, every post, you know, you've got I'm to working. do that, actually. I, yeah. Work. <laughs> yeah. You've got to push it, exactly. So, and someone's got to do that for the rest of us, all right? Yes. Thank you. I'll happily take it on for all of us. Thank you. I really respect that. If you ever need a hand, you know, I can. Oh, I'll try. I don't, I don't actually need a <laughs> hand most of the time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we'll, make, we'll, we'll make sure that you are always stocked up on QVG. Don't worry. You'll have a, a monthly subscription coming through. Does, can, do you actually do this yet, a monthly subscription? We should do that. We don't, but we've been discussing it for a while, mostly for our own benefit, um, yeah. but also for our, um, no, for our lovely customers. I think it would be great just to have a drop-off of Vino on the door. And you don't even have to think about it. It just arrives and you've got your yeah. stock for the month. Yeah. Care I mean, free. Well, oh. I mean, how is it going for no, you two, though? Because Bonnie's five months now, so how... Yeah. Just five months. How it's, is that you know, going? Yeah, there's definitely been nights where... I'll, you know, I've said internally, good luck to us. I've not said it to you yet, mm. but I think I might start that. It's quite good. It's quite enjoy your sleep. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> um, no, we've had, it's, it's been um, ups and downs. Yeah. You know, at the beginning, she, you, they're so sleepy and, and it's, you know, great in the day. In the evenings, you're kind of up all night, but the adrenaline just kind of keeps mm. you going. And um, I think only when she was, you know, whenever she started sleeping for longer stints, did we realise how exhausted you are. Yeah. Because you kind of just go, 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 go. And then whenever she started sleeping for sort of four or five hours at a time, um, I definitely felt more tired. But mm. now she's kind of getting into, you know, she's a bit more responsive to her routine, which is mm. amazing. Nice. And she now kind of understands. I was thinking about this yesterday. We've kind of started changing her um, routine in the day so that we can kind of try and get her sleeping longer at night and it's so amazing that now she's got to the point where when she has her bath and she gets into bed she knows that that's time yeah. for her long sleep mm. as opposed to just her little you know naps throughout the day that she was doing and it's really interesting that all of the just all of the things that we've been trying to you know do to um, you know like her sleepy cues and things to kind of instill in her that it's time for bed is you know it's working and it's, it's lovely. And but that beginning bit. Great for us. And tell yeah. Gina about the last two nights. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. But you keep trying to jinx it. But I'm not trying to jinx it. But you are. And also, it's really unfair to say that you have a baby that has slept for a long time. No, I but, but, I, but I'm sure... There's an element of guilt to admitting that your child That's the thing, slept. isn't it? So you've got a baby who has slept seven till seven the last two nights. It's yeah. amazing. And first night, you're like, we've cracked it. This is it. But second I'm night, it can all go... It. Yeah, I know. No, tits yeah. Up. We, we, but yeah. but oh, that, that, there is that thing, though. There's that weird thing of feeling guilty about it because you know that other people aren't sleeping. Mm. But you've gone through a period of time where you haven't slept. I'm and actually, sure. all those people with babies that don't sleep, all they want is for their baby to sleep. So they're, they're, yeah. on, on a massive level, everyone's really happy for you, you yeah. know, when that happens. Yeah. On another yeah. level, they're just like, why? Why of not course. me? Of course. But, but you know, think, it's, inc it's incredible yeah, you, that that's... The, the, it's great. Uh, yeah, I think you've got it as well, like, you know, and who knows if, if it will continue, and I don't want to jinx anything. Um, but I think you've well, already jinxed No, but also I think you've just got to celebrate those small wins, yeah, those moments. Sure, you know, I'm sure. sure you can remember the first time that, you know, they slept through the night 
and it is like one of the it's a really big moment um and i remember the first the first night that she did it we sort of you know because you do constantly throughout the night you know you're sort of waking up ready to you know just in case she's awake and you sort of look at your watch or your phone and checking the time we're doing it sort of continuously through the night and then i remember suddenly i woke and it was 6 30 and i was like oh my god no, it was hilarious it was kind of like you know in home alone where the mom and dad wake up and they're like <gasps> yeah it was so one of all those and i were obviously asleep and she sleeps in our wardrobe just beside so beside not a star it's not a wardrobe it's a room in between the bedroom and, and our own suite um, so she's beside us, but she's behind the door, um, and it, it got to 6.30, and Ol and I woke up like, <gasps> what's going on? Yeah. And looked at the clock, and we were like, oh my goodness, it's half past six. What's going on? Luke crept in, and I was like, is she all right? Is she, is she okay? I put my hand on her chest, yeah, and I yeah, was yeah. like... Because you do yeah. panic, don't you? you? panic, of course, cause it's the f and because we're, you're so tired. You're literally like zombie the whole night yeah then you know wake up to go to the loo or anything throughout the night so it was um yeah one of those moments of like holy moly we've we've made this and then the second night we you know made sure the temperature was exactly the same we did the <laughs> same routine we did before was the same everything she had the same amount of milk <laughs> <laughs> yeah but definitely taking oh, yeah. taking out some of the nap the like well making her nap in the afternoon shorter and we're upping her feeds a bit so she's obviously going to bed a lot tighter and, yeah. and you know more content in terms of the milk she's taking so it's a whole thing isn't it oh, this, this it really is. is it really is and the four month sleep regression is such a, a oh. nasty thing nasty yeah. thing yeah. you know because i think when you've got teething. newborns you're expecting it yeah, you know yeah, and then sure. when things start getting slightly better and the sleep regression comes in mm. and i think that knocked me for six that uh, but talking about you two, your childhoods, I imagine, were very different. Like you grew up in very. opposite ends of mm. um, the UK. So, mm. so how, what what were your childhoods like? Um, mine, I'm from a family of four. Well, just one sibling and my parents. Um, so we had a really cosy, um, lovely childhood in Scotland. Um, I was born in Glasgow, and then I grew up in Dunblane. Um, and yeah, it was just lovely. We we're a really tight family. My parents have been together since they were 14. So we've Aww. had this amazing love and, you know, they're um, them just around us. Right? They're just amazing. Um, and yeah, I kind of, I don't know what growing up, I was kind of, I don't know if I really knew who I was. I mean, honestly, till I was like early or mid twenties, I, I kind of was a bit of a sort of introverted child and only now I really know who I am, I guess. Who am I? Who am I? I don't know. Maybe I don't. Then I guess you get the whole, you know, becoming a mother, and then you're like, who am I again? Yeah. But, yeah. I, mean, but I had a lovely childhood, but very different to very different to all. I was kind of middle of nowhere in Scotland, and um, a little bit sheltered, I'd say. But so cosy. I mean, Ems's family are so tight. I mean, you must you call your mum pretty much every day, don't you? I call my mum every day. I've met your yeah. mum. You've met my mum at Joe Mal uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you've met my mum. Um, she is the best. Mm. And she is, you know, she's one of my, my best friends. In fact, she is my best friend. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I just, oh, yeah, I love her. Uh, yeah, really lucky. We had a lovely childhood and Very just lots cozy. of love. So yeah. much love. Mine was a little different. I mean, there was a lot of love for sure. Yeah. Um, but a little more sort of unconventional. Um, so there were six of us. So I've got three other siblings, two half and then my full sister, Laura, grew up in Gloucestershire. Um, and then my parents actually got divorced when I was quite young. So then I ended up living with my mum. Mm -hmm. And then around 13, moved to London, um, went to Eton. And that's sort of when, I mean, my first memories sort of kick in around then, I guess. My yeah. early years are a little bit of a fog. Um, so am mine. Love, and it's funny, a isn't it? Love, mm. Yeah. That, that's, um, yeah. But it's I'm funny though how those those periods in our lives for some people they can they can talk about everything and they they have such clear memories like Tom can go through a bag of toys from his childhood cuz he kept everything and wow wow i can't rem i can't I remember anything but I have no me we were talking the other day about mm. like first memories and my dad can remember being like 3 my i think my first memory i'm like 12 13 like proper, yeah. you know, not not young. It is funny though. I, d I don't know about, but since becoming a parent, I've started thinking a lot, or trying to remember things from my childhood. Um, and obviously, mum's quite a feature on our podcast. We have a help hotline, and we call mum every week. 
Um, and she's sharing a lot of stories which are super interesting and very niche. Um, so that's maybe like pulling up a few memories. But I do think now we've become parents, I find personally, I'm, I'm thinking back to my childhood. For sure. And, you know, I had an amazing childhood and my parents were the best. But at the same time, you know, I just want to be the best parent possible and I want to be really hands on. Yeah. And it was such a different time then. Um, so I yeah, think I'm that's something that lot. happens even more as they get older as well, because as, as Bonnie grows, you know, you're going to be hit with with different challenges and hurdles. And, mm. and like, I, mm. I feel like I'm constantly looking back and going, well, how did my parents cope with yeah. this or or sure. I feeling this? So why am I feeling so course, triggered, yeah. I guess, in some ways by this behavior? And it's because of how how you were spoken to, how things yeah. were dealt with, um, you it know. It goes and, back to our childhood, doesn't it? Yeah, mm. and it, then it goes back to their childhoods and their childhoods. So, you know, it just, know, it's just a chain, isn't it? Mm. Oh. Oh, I my know. goodness. Well, that, that's <laughs> another thing for Ems and I, because we've come from such different backgrounds. You know, and Ems, she went to day school all, all I, I, your yeah, school career, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I just went to a normal local school, not private, not, you know... Um, and obviously, you know, when I was 13, I was shipped out, you know, out of the house. Um, so we often talk about that, you know, as, as, as Bonnie comes into her teenage years. You know, you start talking yeah. about that sort of stuff. Yeah, we both have um, very different experiences, so it's hard to kind of d imagine, you know, the middle or, or mm. what way. And obviously, you know, I know times are different and where we live, it's, you know, we don't live where I live, where I, you know, got the local bus for 10 minutes to go to school yeah. and then would come back on the local bus, dropped at the end of my street and mm. walk up my street. It's, you know, we live in a different time, but I'd love her to have the similar yeah. experience. I don't, I I don't want Bonnie to go anywhere. No, no, no. I'll happily just have her be schooled here. Yeah. As long as she just, I don't want her leaving the house at all. Sure. You two, you had quite a, a long, uh, I would say, not courtship, but before getting together, there was a lot yeah. of, you know, you'd met each other, then it was a long time before you actually got together. Mm. At what point do you remember talking future and families? Or did you? Was that kind of like a let's not yeah. go there? <laughs> you did? No, for sure we mm. did, yeah. I actually didn't want children. Oh, really? For, yeah, which is so shocking to me now because I can't imagine my life, obviously, without Bonnie and without, you know, us being mm. parents. But... I didn't I didn't see that in in my future and I remember I was talking about it you know quite early on we've been together now for almost 10 years yeah so it was yeah a long time ago um, can you remember the exact moment when we I when we started talking about family future I mean I think seriously you know talking about it you know in our future plans was you know sort of five years ago mm. I'd say when we you know, we're looking to buy a house and yeah. all them proposed mm. to me and then we kind of started on the sort of journey of you know, the conventional becoming adults, you know, get married, buy, buy a house, get married, da, 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 have a baby. Um, so, yeah, that kind of became, I guess, more real then. But, you know, we always spoke about in the future having a family. It just took For me sure. a, a while to, you know, realise that that's really what I wanted. Um, yeah, what was the, the the shift from you for you then from going f from not know. wanting a family? and. I, 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 well, I modelled for years and my whole life was kind of jumping from A to B with no plan and I never yeah. really had a plan so plans to me were kind of really foreign and, and I didn't really, um, I didn't really gel with plans and I also didn't really understand it because I would get my schedule for the next day at, you know, seven o'clock the night before. Yeah. So every day I had no idea if I was going to be in Paris or if I was going to be in Manchester or if I was going to be in Glasgow or, you know, anywhere. I didn't really know what, what that week had. So I guess I kind of spent a lot of my time with no plan so plan yeah. just didn't you know I, I, it just didn't really come into my head and then when all and I met and we got together and you know I knew that he was the one and I was going to spend the rest of my life with him I think as our lives then naturally you know gelled together and became one it, it was all I could then think about was that you know maybe I do want to I want to have a plan and I want to mm. have a sort of you know a quieter and more um thought out life I guess planned mm. life I don't know yeah well in, in the way I that it can be planned yeah. yeah yeah I think I I was so you know everything was always so hectic that I craved the sort of routine of of like a boring life which yeah. you know I I love and that's also why I have this you know pull to go to the countryside because I just want to have like 
okay, so we work from nine mm -hmm. to six, and then we have like dinners at this time. You know, it's more of a schedule, which I kind of have a craving for. Can you remember when you both decided, you know what, now's the time, let's, let's actually think properly about starting a family and go for it? Mm -hmm. Yes, I remember. Do that you? Was, yeah, it was, um, before we got married, we kind of thought, well, let's, you know, let's, let's start trying and see, you know, if we're, if we're lucky. And, um, yeah, it took us, took us a little while. Um, but yeah, I think we, because originally we were going to get married. We had to change our wedding date quite a few times, as I'm sure so yeah. many people did with COVID and everything. Because, you know, originally we were going to start trying after we got married and we were meant to get married originally in, God, was it 2018? I don't even know, maybe 19. We changed it so many times and had to, and then we didn't end up getting married until... Um, 20. <laughs> 20. Oh, brain. How? Oh, Baby gosh. brain. Hold on. I've even got it tattooed on my hand. Hold on. 05, 5th of August. No, the, wait. We no, that's when we got engaged. Sorry. Well, it was on this long. Of of it was the 15th, 15th of December. 2020. 2020. No. Sorry. And you're back in the room. So many dates to remember. Um, but I think, um, yeah. No, it, you, sorry. But yeah, originally the plan was we were going to get married and try after. But yeah, then, we were going to get married earlier. COVID then happened. Everything then we kind just, of, we, we just, just didn't want to wait. We just didn't yeah. want to wait any longer. Um, yeah. And how did that feel going into that? Because for us, I know Tom said when we said right, this we're gonna we're gonna go for it now. Let's actually we started we basically started not try not not trying. So yeah, you know, yeah. and he, yeah. he started giggling, and I was like, "Why are you laughing?" He was like, "Because of all the sex." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I married a teenage boy." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. It's too good. Oh. Yeah, I think we kind of did the same. We were kind of like, "Oh, if it yeah. happens, it happens." And then yeah. as, as the time went on, and each month, I really realised how much, well, how much we both wanted it. Where you would kind of have that, like, <gasps> "Are we? Are we not?" Yeah. And then yeah. every time it was kind of not, it. it was then you know it was each month is harder um because i think you just you're so invested in it emotionally mm -hmm. as well as uh, you know obviously physically but you know it's such an emotional roller coaster that you kind of go through of each month kind of kind of waiting and then there were some months where i'd be late and i'd be like oh, this and yeah. then my period would come and you'd yeah. kind of feel you know feel really done for until the next until the next time it's very Absolutely. difficult in that situation as well knowing mm. at what point do you go oh is this something that I have to look yeah, into well, we actually, we had a We had a sort of deadline date of if by this point, then let's, you know, let's um, speak to the doctor and see if there's anything that we could be doing differently or anything that, you know, needs yeah. to be done. It's funny, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's until you sort of go in, in into this, this whole, you don't really realise how many people struggle with it. And yeah. it is obviously so tough. Um, and then you realise what a miracle it actually is mm -hmm. when it happens. Massively. Um, but it is so nice now that people openly talk about it because I remember speaking to my mum about it and I was like, you know, so many people are going through such tough times and miscarriages and all these sort of things. And I was like, was this the case, in, in, you know, when you were trying, mum? And she was like, it was, but no one spoke about it. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, no, you know, I think it's so important trying to, you know, it's so hard for, you know, all the women and to have some support and like being able to talk about it, I think is so important. And, you know, mum said, in, in, you know, it did happen, but no one ever spoke about it. Um, yeah. So, you know, the sense of like community and people talking about it and you start hearing people's stories and you realise, you know, wow, what a miracle it really is. Um, you know, so when, oh, when sorry, that, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> so when that bob too does come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You okay? We're very emotional in this household. <laughs> it's because there's so much love up in here. Mwah. It's amazing it's... as well, isn't it? When you have your baby, the emotions. Yeah. Oh, it's like a whole other other side of you that just comes out, isn't it? I well, mean, when I, she I, cries, I... I start going. <laughs> when she cries, I start fizzing. It all starts happening. Oh, but sorry, when it guys. is taking a while to happen, and, you know, for, like for me, so my first pregnancy ended with miscarriage and then after that it took a long time for me to get pregnant again but also I think for me it was I felt so angry and disappointed with my body and there was a lot of other stuff going on yeah. like I think yeah. I had to mentally address that before actually falling pregnant again 
Um, but when you are waiting to get pregnant or tr and, and trying, hearing all these other stories, yeah. it, it, you know, and knowing that you're not on your own is mm. such a massive For sure. help. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's so um, true. Because, you know, pretty much everyone, you know, when you, when you start going through and you start speaking to people, you start realizing, wow, pretty much everyone has some sort of story or has been through something. You know, it's very rare um, for people to, to get super lucky and just, you know, first time, you know, get pregnant. And, you know, it is amazing how people now share their stories. And, you know, like you say, you have that sense of support and community. Hmm. Um, and, I, you know, I think that's just incredible. Um, yeah. And I just, so, you know, women are just so incredible. What you girls go through, unbelievable. It's just such an emotional roller coaster. Oh, Crazy. I, my, I mean, my cheeks are so Oh, crazy. she's going again. <laughs> but it is, you it know. Is, it's, it's, a, it's just amazing. It's, you know, our bodies do stuff that our brains can't even dream up. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. To, to make this beautiful. It's insane. These little people. I mean, I look at Bonnie and I'm like, not only have you got everything physically that I can see, but, you know, We've made DNA, we've made, you know, a brain and a personality yeah. And, yeah. and it's just, it's incredible. It's, no, she's, it she's just, she's magic. For a lot it's of a people, I think it's when you have your baby in your arms as well that you can look back over the process to getting oh, yeah. there. And yeah. it really sort of, yeah. it makes you think about that in a way that you can't think about it really when you're going through it. For sure. Completely agree. Completely. 100%. Especially, you know, at the beginning when, uh, you know, you have the apps and it's like, this is it's poppy seed and then it goes to the next yeah. stage and the next stage and the next stage. And I remember so vividly each week that mm. I would be like, oh, it's the size of it. And then, you know, you'd hold it in your hand and you'd imagine this tiny little little person and, or, you know, little thing at that point. And, and now when that she's here, I think, oh my God, you were that little blueberry and you yeah. were that little seed and now yeah. look at you. It's unbelievable. Look at you. She, I mean, she's just, she's a little person. Can you remember finding out you were pregnant and telling telling Ollie? Yeah, oh, it I was can. so good. Ams even filmed it. It was genius. Really? Tell yeah, I'll tell them yeah. what you did. Um, so uh, I I bought a little pair of shoes, a little pair of fluffy shoes, <laughs> <laughs> and um, all came back and they were just sitting on the bed and and I and I just no one the shoes. Oh yeah, no, they was no no she I swear you'd wrapped them and what she'd done sneakily she'd put her camera her camera sort of in between the pillows, but I couldn't really <laughs> see it. Um, and I came home and she was like, I've got you something. And I remember unwrapping it and it was a little pair of shoes. Yeah. And obviously just, <laughs> just a whole load of emotions. I know. Um, just so, Jeez, yeah. It's so funny. All, everything that changes in, you know, in a year, it doesn't mm. feel that like that long ago, but you know, everything is, everything in between feels but like. But also you as a ago. person feel like you change so much. Like, I and you I should. Now. You absolutely yeah. should change the person. Yeah. I don't think you can go through yeah. all of that. It, you know, mm -hmm. the, the the getting pregnant on its own, the, the the pregnancy, the birth, having life brought into the world. Any part of that has to change you. You know, sure. otherwise, I think we're we're failing humanity. You know, if, if it yeah. doesn't, um, you know, affect you in some way. A hundred percent. Completely. I think you do. I, I actually didn't really realise how much I would change. I kind of thought, you know, I'm pregnant, we're going to have the baby and then life will kind of resume. Yeah. And actually, not only does your whole life completely change for the better, of course, but your your mind changes, your brain, mm. the way you think, the way, you know, your priorities no longer do, yeah. do I think about me really ever. She is mm. number one. and And before... I think about anything. I think about yeah. her and what's best for her and what she needs in that situation, as opposed to, you know, I thought, you know, I'll still live my life, you know, relatively similarly. It's just yeah. not at all. What was what was pregnancy like? Did you did you enjoy pregnancy? Yeah, I think um, the beginning. You looked I... fabulous throughout oh, it. Oh, thank oh, she you. Was, she thank was the you. Best. I, I definitely didn't feel fabulous all the time, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> The beginning, I found the first 12 weeks really tough. I basically just felt hungover every day, but obviously had none of the alcohol. And um, I just felt really, I just felt really weird. I felt car sick. I felt so emotional. I didn't know how I felt. I didn't know if this was the right decision because it was kind of, you know, obviously I, I knew it was the right decision, but then when you think, oh my God, I've got 12 weeks of this. How yeah. am I going to get through this feeling mm -hmm. of just feeling so terrible? Um, but of course you then just think about, you know, the baby and what's happening and you, you know, every day you get through, of course, but, um, that was, that was tough. I just didn't really feel 
you know, the sort of magic that I expected to feel. Because you kind of see, you know, in movies, people being pregnant and they're grey. And like, although now, I guess, they show more of the sickness, which is more realistic. <laughs> I think um, my first experience of watching pregnancy on TV or in, in a film um, was Look Who's Talking. You know, the opening oh, where yeah. she's like downing orange on the street. So I think I had quite a... Realistic, realistic <laughs> view of yeah. it being like, ah, yeah. that you, yeah, yeah. Of it. wow, I feel bad. And <laughs> yeah. I'm going to drink this liter of yeah. orange. Did you have any weird cravings? Did you have weird cravings? Or no, not really? I liked salty things, but I think I just like salty things anyway. And it was just a great excuse to get like fish and chips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And bare Nutella. How much Nutella did you take down? Actually, I didn't. I think I was going through a bit of a health kick, so I started making my chocolate spread at that point. What? I know. Was it I nice? Know. Yeah. You can make great chocolate spread. I mean, I can't remember how I was Come doing on, it. Come on, G, drop the can. recipe. Come on. <laughs> Healthy, chocky spread. I'm yeah. all over it. Mm, it's good. Love it. It's very, very good. And now, how, though, how... with the kids, Sorry. like, you know, so it used to be that thing of... Um, after, you know, if I've done a great day of writing, treating myself to a spoonful of Nutella or my, mm. you know, homemade stuff. And the kids now see you doing things like that and you have to yeah. adjust your behaviour. <laughs> Be like, yeah. no, mummy is no. not doing this. Yeah. You cannot yeah. do Erase this from your memory. This did not happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pot of broccoli. <laughs> <It> totally <laughs> is. <laughs> um, but do you know what? I remember when... Um, and I don't know if you had the same, but when Bonnie was born, I remember you often sort of spoke about... Because near the end, you did... Oh, I loved you, being pregnant. I loved you, it towards the end, and I loved whenever I had the bump, because then you didn't yeah. just feel like a sort of bloated mess. You then were like, no, I am pregnant, and, you know, this is... I have a little baby in here. Um, so whenever I got my bump, I, I loved it, and I was just so proud of it, and I, I loved being pregnant. I loved feeling her every move, and mm. yeah. towards the end, I remember just crying every day, thinking I'm not going to feel her, and I'm not going to be able to protect her, and she's going to be out in this scary world and not you know with me in my tummy mm. and I remember saying to you every mm. night like I'm just so upset that I'm not going to feel her, feel her yeah. inside of me and all you used to always say I know but you'll have her in your arms and yeah it will be, be even you know, more special even better um and then as soon as she was born of course I didn't think once about being pregnant yeah. <laughs> um but I thought I was going to really really I mean I do of course I you know I, I did I loved it but I it's I much prefer her being on the outside than on the inside do you <laughs> Yeah. That's really interesting when you're so sad about her leaving. I know. Uh, I, I, and I honestly didn't even... Th I've not even thought about it until now, until you've just said that, yeah. that uh, you know, her being in my tummy. But I was really nervous about it. And how did you feel going towards the, the birth? So Bonnie was breached. So she was a elected and planned C-section from... Well, we were kind of went back and forth on it for months and months and months. Um... And yeah, we, we came to the decision of, of her having, of her coming out cesarean. And it's, it's a weird thing, because obviously you get a date and a time, or you get, you know, a window of, of when she's going to be coming. And it's kind of like, you know, it's so exciting, but it's so nerve wracking, because you yeah. have this, it's almost like a reservation. Yeah. And you're just kind of waiting for the day and waiting for the time and kind of trying to prepare for everything before, but really you can't prepare for anything apart yeah. from you know, what what you can in terms of recovery and, and all that other sort of stuff. But it, it was really, it was very odd. But I loved it. I loved my C-section. Did no, you spend the last... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We did that for a whole week before. We, we even... Were like, yeah, because we, we do things like we went for a really nice lunch to one of our favourite restaurants. We were like, this is the last time of the three of us. Yeah. And then we'd so. go to, like, just do things like locally, not, you know, and it would be our last as just the two of us. The funniest is when we packed um, to go to the hospital. <laughs> we we kind of packed like we were going on holiday. It was I a bit weird. I, I was like, right, Ems, have we got the backgammon? Um, don't forget the cards. A oh, bottle of red wine. Obviously, we'll bring a couple of bottles of rouge. Thinking that it was going to be like some beaut, like, you know, just playing games and I stuff mean. after. We did not open you know any what, of that I stuff. I also, in my I mean, bag. I don't know what we were thinking. I had in my bag... Um, I mean, I had so much stuff. I had, like, obviously pyjamas and socks and loads of underwear. And, and then I had the nappies. 
I didn't use anything else in my suitcase apart yeah. from the nappies. I, oh, I, did, I honestly, I didn't take one thing out. Yeah. I didn't even open it. I know Em's had like ten outfits, uh, but like not <laughs> outfits, like like ten pairs of jammy bottoms and ten yeah. pairs. Because yeah, I was yeah, worried yeah. about the lockia and the blood and everything, you know, being everywhere and not having stuff to change into. Yeah, didn't you? I mean, I literally was like. Naked apart from nappies. Naked in nappies and a gown. Um, let's talk actually being in the hospital and having the C-section because um, mm. one thing that you spoke about actually on um, on your podcast was the fear, um, which oh, I perfect. haven't heard people talk about before, mm. but it's, so, it's such an obvious thing for you to be experiencing yeah. you're going into major surgery mm. and yeah. you know and that is that is a scary thing and even though you know that the people that are uh, you know are going to be performing surgery they do it all the time you know for you that is um you know this is your like first time into it it's it's happening to your body um talk talk to me about this uh, this fear that you felt yeah i was um i was really really scared um and i was really scared from I think as soon as we had the date and the and the sort of time window, that's when I really it, it kind of all became really real. And although I, you know, I obviously knew what a C-section was and I knew what the sort of not necessarily what the process was, but you know the main bits I kind of knew. But as soon as you kind of think, okay, well actually, you know, we're going into surgery. I'm having you know an epidural or I had a spinal, and and it all just becomes really real and scary. And I wasn't nervous about anything going wrong or because I had full trust in, in the professionals there and I knew that they knew what they were doing. Um, so I wasn't worried about things going wrong. I was just, I was just scared. I, I've never been in a hospital before apart from, you know, A&E when I was 10 if, with a broken wrist, but I'd never, you know, had that um, experience. And I, 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 was, I, I was just worried. I was really, mm. really scared. And I, and I remember lying there kind of each point always amazing and was just ho held my hand. And, you know, we, we were both scared, although yeah. I was the one that was being operated on, always terrified as well because, you know, you... Well, I've never seen you that scared before. Like, she was physically shaking. So, you know, I was just super scared for her as well because it is such a major surgery. And until you walk, you know, as soon as the date was set, it all became real. But then when you walk into that theatre room... I mean, I walked in in my slipper, the slippers I'm know, wearing we now... We still thought we were on holiday we before be that. <laughs> I mean, I was like, you ready for a quick game I, of back, Gavin? I did not think I was I know, no, no. But when you walk in that room, I could I immediately see in Ems's eyes, you know, it yeah. suddenly was like, oh, wow. And I told everyone in the room, I said, listen, I'm, I'm really scared. I'm really, really nervous. And the anaesthetist, who was amazing, absolutely amazing, who was just, she was just so great. And she mm. held me the whole time and I was just crying and crying. I'm going to cry now thinking about it. It just takes me back. Um, <laughs> um, I was just so petrified and she was so reassuring and she was amazing and always amazing as well and I remember when they then you know they obviously numb you and they test if you're numb by blowing cold I don't even know if they blow cold air or if it's cold water I, I don't really remember what it was but I remember feeling it on the bits that weren't numb and then as they were you know taking it lower down I couldn't feel anything and that I was kind of like relief like oh god it's, it's done you know I'm I've done it, and, and although I had this great fear of, of I don't know what, as soon as I was numb, I couldn't feel anything, and all I knew was that I was in safe hands, everything mm. was going well, and I was about to hold our baby. So that when you get to that point, it was kind of like relief, and I remember saying to the surgeon, I'm, I'm so scared, and he was like, don't worry, it's completely normal. And they said, you know, as soon as we start, it's gonna be, you know, less than two minutes so they're here and we didn't know if we were having a boy or a girl so that was another you know element mm. of excitement of you know is it going to be a boy or a girl and we said to we said to them uh, from the beginning I said I you know I really want all to tell me if it's a boy or a girl I don't want someone to tell me so they lifted her out and they dropped the screen down because I asked for it to be you know more of like a I wanted to see her coming out I didn't yeah. want her to just you know come around from the screen and um they held her up and she was just this perfect little pink thing yeah. and the umbilical cord was covering her little parts so we all couldn't see and I was so emotional I couldn't even see the lights <laughs> never mind see if it was a boy or a girl and it took sort of like I felt like 30 seconds I probably did, like yeah. 10 seconds of dead silence it was silence then well, I said guys like, do you mind if you just sort of it? move <laughs> 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 and then we were like and then yeah, yeah then it, we seen that it was a little girl and she didn't cry for until she came over to me so there was this whole sort of 
felt like a lifetime of her mm. just not making a noise. Yeah. And I just remember, I just I kept saying, "Is she all right? Is she all right? Is she all right?" And all was like, "She's fine. She's perfect." And they were measuring her and all cutting the umbilical cord, and then they just put her on my chest, and she just burst out crying, and I oh. burst out crying, and, <laughs> and then I heard the surgeon stitching me up, asking if he wanted if they wanted to go to Pizza Express for lunch. Oh and yeah, I was like, <laughs> it's like... this has all got a bit too normal, too quick. <laughs> yeah, we're all very casual here, guys. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, "I'm sorry, I thought you wanted me to like make it normal." I was like, "Not that normal." Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're talking about lunch. Ollie, I, you've likened, which I find fascinating. No one's ever spoken. Like, I've never heard this before, but it makes total sense. Umbilical cord. What is it like? Yeah. It's like calamari. Yes. Yeah. And then it as, totally as, is. Yeah. It was. I was so amazed by how sort of tough and. I mean, I didn't bite it, but it was that chewy sort of texture. <laughs> Rubbery. Rubbery. Um, it tastes like calamari. No, I did not. Doesn't. They did offer. I mean, I wasn't up for it. Um, oh. And then, as and then, obviously, when the little as it falls off later down the line, it turns into sort of um, biltong. Biltong, like yeah, like beef jerky. <laughs> so it's got a nice sort of progression. There's so many layers to it. But yeah, great. I love that. But incredible that that is what is you know. I know the source her. of life. I mean, yes. it's unbelievable. Incredible. I know. Of course, oh, was making those those. Calamaris. Unbelievable. <laughs> Ollie, what was it like for you to meet Bonnie? And also for you even just seeing Em go th go through that, like, was there... Oh, it was so overwhelming. Um, God, it's going to get me going now. I can't even think about it. Oh, give me a second. Oh, let's talk about calamari a bit more. It was, um, I mean, easily the most crazy, beautiful day of my entire life. Um, all the emotions, basically. You know, fear, love, excitement, nervous, I mean, just everything. Um, and obviously at the beginning, my main thing is just being there for Em uh, and making sure she was okay. And then when Bonnie came, it was just like, I mean, I can't even really put into words the feeling. Um, obviously, first you have that sense of relief that she's okay, she's healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, like Em said, she wasn't crying at the beginning. So you do have this sort of initial fear, like, is everything okay? Um, and then, yeah, when you see her, you're just like, oh my goodness, just immediate. The love is just undescribable. And then when you hold her for the first time, that is, I think I just, yeah, standard broke into tears. Um, oh no, you just melt, don't you? Just melt. Have you I two melted. always been this emotional? No, like I said. I have. A, I'm a very emotional person. I I've, mean, I am, yeah. I've yeah. got a lot more emotional since I've met Emma. Um, I think she's... Definitely do you think that's like because a, that yeah she allows you she's to, had a positive to effect that. on me yeah to re, do you know what i mean i think especially as a guy we often think that we can't show our emotions um where it's she's so important to she's show your yeah emotions. she's yeah. made me feel made me feel comfortable enough that i can show my emotions yeah and then since bonnie's come along i mean it's just like <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> round two ding ding <laughs> it's like it's an over yeah it's just overwhelming um, but it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, I think it's important that we show our emotions because that's what makes us human. Yeah, And, sure. you know, whether it's a sense of, of all the different emotions, but I just think, yeah. So that day, I've never had so many emotions in, in one day for sure. I mean, it was just like, yeah, magic. Yeah. Guys, if I got you to write a letter on parenthood, who would it be to and what would you say? Good question. A very good question. Um, I love this part. <laughs> um, Ems has been thinking about her answers for weeks. <laughs> I know. I know. We could. We could go for long. I know. I agree. Um, the letter. I, do you know what? I think since becoming a mother, I have such a, you know, whole new, found appreciation and respect, and and I, you know, understand my mum a bit more, and I'd love to. I'd love to send my letter to my mum because you just kind of understand or you think about things differently knowing mm. that, you know, my, my brother was three when I was born and I just have no idea how she still gave me all the love and time and respect and everything divided between two and, and all's mum with, you know, having more siblings. You just think about yeah. the mothers in your life differently um, and how much sacrifice. Yeah, sacrifices for um, sure. Of yeah, I just I just have so much respect and so much, um, and I always respected my mother, of course. But you know, you think you see it differently now. I think as as a mother and having a having a baby yourself.
And I'm just so grateful for the way that, you know, my parents raised us. Yeah. You, you just think about everything really, really Yeah, because I, I guess when you're growing up, you you know, you take it for granted, don't you? And you, as a kid, you don't really think about that, you know? No, not at and, all. And I think until you yourself become a parent, mm. you recognize the sacrifices that they made and, you know, the love and all that, you know, that goes into it and all that, all the emotions, everything that goes into being a parent. So, yeah. yeah the highs and the lows as yeah. well, you know, mm -hmm. on those tough days where you really have to pull, pull yourself through mm. and you just, you know, just so much love and respect for yeah, and those who have done it before us. Amen. Yeah. Ollie, who would your letter be? I mean, can I say that? No, you no, can't. But this is what happens in no, our podcast, sorry. right? So no. we have the highs, Em's touched on the highs and lows, and each week we do our highs and lows. And Em's often asked me, you know, what's her, and I'll give my high, and then she'll jump on the same oh, one. This is but, a podcast. But no, I know, I know, this but what I'm saying, no, but that's a really great, I mean, it, I, I, that is so perfect. But yeah, I can't. But you can't Gee, can it. I can I say mum, my parents? No. no. Okay, no. rather than mum, could I say my parents? Yes, no. you can. Or no. Oh, I yeah, can, no, no you can. You can, can say your parents, and what would you what would you say to them? Oh gosh, I mean, it was so spot on what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Because Sometimes so it's okay to that. say what she said. It's oh, okay. Yeah, it, can I say what she said because it was so good? And I feel <laughs> like if, if I say anything else, your listeners are going to be like, "Well, that was not quite as good." No, that's not true. You're so great with your words. Um, okay, if I didn't pick my parents. Um, could I say my uh, writing a letter to myself you and can. my younger self? Absolutely, absolutely. That's a um, great answer. I would probably say my younger self. Um, and there, wait, there are specific questions here, or, or in relation no, to can, what I'm writing. You, you can write whatever you like. I would probably say something along the lines of, ooh, ooh, "Why am I feeling emotional again? The fizz comes back. This is never ending, G. This is like so full on." Do you know what this um, is? All this I would is say, I would say something along the, the lines scariest hood of just appre appreciate, you know, appreciate every moment, appreciate the loved ones around you. Um, and just remember what's important in life, and that is your loved ones. Fizzy. What? <laughs> what's going on but here? The thing is, Ollie, like, life is a journey, and if anything was different throughout it, you wouldn't be where you are now. You know what I, I mean? Know. With everything, you know, we all discover things, we explore whatever, you know, and, um, and it leads you to where you're meant to be. And I've known that you are meant to be in that kitchen with, with Emma right now. Yes, I am. Yes. Mwah. <laughs> Yes, um, you are. Yes, I am. yes, you are, and you're not going anywhere. <laughs> I, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> now do the washing and do the tidying. Get it done. Am I Daddy Dyer? Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't know who you are there, but did she you not know that you've got like a, like a, a, an East London accent? Did you not know yeah, that, Emma? Did you, have you, how have you not noticed that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Now do the washing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Daddy oh. Downfire in the house, so any sort of washing. She's like, get yeah. on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we've finished the podcast with you completing three sentences. So, Emma, mm. being a mum means everything. Ollie? Can I? Can I? I'm no, sorry. No, come on. No. We spoke about this sorry. last night. This is actually. And I said to Emma, my answer is everything. No, you and didn't. And now she's taken it. You didn't say that. That's not okay, true. Okay, I'm changing my answer. Well, okay. that time. Being a parent is the best thing in the entire world. It's a slight change on everything, but... <laughs> it's, kind of that's like, okay. it's kind of like... <sighs> yeah. This, that, that's okay, guys. That, Gee, is that's, that all right? I'm, I'm... I did last night. Last night, I said everything. Anyways, all right. Since having a child, I... Who wants to go first, just in case the other one right, pitches their own? All can okay. go first. Since having a child, I have... A new understanding of love. I have a new sense of purpose and perspective. That's very good. I think I'm going to sit. No, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. um, I have a new understanding of time. Mm. I think time with your with your partner, time with yourself, time with your child, time with you know, just time is just so precious. And I think not wasting it, you seem to get more out of it whenever you yeah. actually have you know time in the day to. And also, whenever she falls asleep, you're like, do I have a minute? Do I have an hour? Let's do as much as I can mm. in this time. So, yeah, time for me has become... Time's a good one. And I've got one of those things. <laughs> when you asked me that question earlier about the letter, 
I might go back and say to myself, time is very precious. Make the most mm. of every moment, every Absolutely. opportunity. Yeah. Um, and when you do become a dad, you'll understand how precious it really is. Yeah. That's is. my letter. Nice. Well, funny that. So all basically said, I'll say what she's saying, but like 10 yeah, minutes ago. But for a different part. Just slide yeah, it back. I mean, she's, you get, yeah, you're getting a sorry, bit of an insight. <laughs> I'm happy when. Um, you go first. I'm happy when I'm with my family. When I'm with all, oh, I'm born. I'm, I'm just happy when I'm, when it's just us, and we don't have anything else around us. Just you know, can be chilled and at home and cozy and just us. Makes me happy. Obviously, gee, that was mine as well. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Of course. That's when I'm my happiest, when I'm just chilling with you guys. Sorry, gee, this is actually getting no, embarrassing. But now. that's good. It shows that we're in tune, gee, doesn't it? It, it does, shows that it we does. We want the same things in life. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, Emma, you'd be me. quite you'd be quite disappointed if he said, yeah. I'm at my love, happiest when I'm, I'm at the gym happiest. playing like no, squash. Yeah. No. I'm at my happiest yeah. while I'm by myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, no, same, of course. The happiest when I'm surrounded by my loved ones. And obviously my innermost circle being Ems and Bonnie. And I'm happiest when being a dad. Yeah. There you go. I'm happiest when being a dad. Gorgeous. Guys, thank you so much. It's no, really been thank such you. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you for, you for having, having us. us. And thank you for um, listening to our tears and our sniffles. Yeah, and, sorry, um, guys. being such a lovely... Having such a, we just had such a lovely time. Thank you. I yeah, could have listened so to, to, to more and more and more, but you know what? I'll listen to your podcast, and I hope you start <laughs> snibbling on that. All right. There is. There's a few snibbles on that. <laughs> oh yes, lots of snibbles. Thank you so much, Gee, and Thank love to all so the Thank you so much. Big love Thank to you. you. So Bye. much love. So Bye. much love.